Welcome to 8,000 Miles to Tap Town. My name is Finbar and this is Abby Clataria Holistic. So Abby is an incredibly talented musician from the Philippines. She's a multi-instrumentalist, vocalist, and she's someone who uses the Chapman stick as a foundation for creativity and art. Her performances are amazing. She sort of mixes all sorts of instruments from ethnic percussion to modern electronics. A true holistic performer. In this episode, I got to sit down with Abby and chat about her musical journey with the Chapman Stick and her passion for performing live and writing music. Um, it was a great episode. We had a lot of fun. We sat down. It was good positive energy. Um, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Abby Clitario. So welcome, Abby. It's amazing to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining uh, this whole this whole crazy series. I know. Thank you so much, Finn, for inviting me as well. Uh, <laughs> I it, think uh, this, this is one of the first um, uh, interviews that I've had in, in such a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, hopefully I'm not going to disappoint with my craziness. So, <laughs> Well, I'm crazy too. <laughs> good, good. We're doing the crazy party. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, we got to be crazy to play the instruments we play, right? So. Well, that's what they say. <laughs> everyone, everyone that has you know uh, uh, seen me to to gig with it because I don't normally just use the stick. You know, when when I have my setup, it's the full thing going on. I have also my microphone on, my headset on, my keyboards in the front. And so that's going to be, you know, crazy too. <laughs> you must but have a, a, a fairly, you must have a good roadie. Well, <laughs> I you, try right? to bring all of, yes. <laughs> that's how it is. You know, yeah. you still got to carry your stuff. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. the the Chapman stick compared to the to the um, keyboard is is already quite lighter in a sense, but still you got to carry the effects, you got to carry you whatnot. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> well, look, let's. Um, what I'd like to do, Abby, so I'd love to find out. Like you're in Manila, it, you, you always you you've always been based there in in the Philippines. I've always yeah. been, uh, been based here in Manila, Philippines. Yeah. So where sure. was it when you sort of like, how did you first learn about the stick? Where did you first get your, your first sight or smell or touch okay. of it? Okay. <laughs> um, it was more like um, like 10 years ago or maybe a, f a few years way back, maybe 15 years ago. I've just heard it uh, in one of the recordings. I think uh, one of those was Sean Malone's uh uh, from Cynic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is that instrument? And so I, we tried to research uh, with it and I found out that it was a Chapman stick and obviously it wasn't available here in the Philippines and it, you cannot find it anywhere here <laughs> in, uh, in Manila. So, you know, uh, the research came on and uh, what I really loved about it is the 
actual natural sound of it i the natural ha- sound i i got to give it to greg howard it was him who I, you know the the recordings that he he um he released way back was really uh to present the chapman stick with its very very clear and um uh very um warm sound you know i i would always love to call it it's like the cello of the orchestra because um i always wanted to play the cello <laughs> but you know hearing the chapman stick it was like you know bringing that same warmth and tone that i i really loved it and you know um how i chanced upon a second hand a chapman stick was was really bizarre um it was actually posted someone posted about selling it in one of the base uh, forums in, here in manila and you know it was way i'm i i remember it clearly i i saw it <laughs> but i know it was out of my budget because i know <laughs> how a chapman stick costs yeah. and i knew at that time even the second hand one um you know would would be way be out of my budget so actually our guitarist in in my uh, progressive band fuse box saw that post and you know and he told us that he he likes it you know that he he's planning to buy it and so okay well go ahead you yeah you know if if you have the means go ahead and it would be it would be very very nice if i could only see and touch one at least my bandmate would have it and so i can you know borrow it or something like that but what happened was um he he was he wasn't able to do so because of his um he checked his finances blah 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 and so secretly our keyboardist uh eric bought it <laughs> he secretly bought it because he wanted you know mo- most of us you know are, are really awed by the instrument and for some reason he bought it okay and he he uh hid it from us for a you know a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then <laughs> finally he said i can't do this <laughs> he thought he thought he could learn it by himself and you know he revealed that he got an instrument but he, he doesn't have the time to you know learn it and stuff like that it, um his fingers don't reach blah 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 i don't know what are, what his other reasons were okay and now comes the you know dealing part of it i told him <laughs> <laughs> um okay here's the deal um if i can try the instrument for you know a couple of weeks and see how it feels and you know if i can learn the the learning curve could i you know uh have it instead i buy it from you in installments or something like that you know i had to to i think i had to borrow money from my mom or something too yeah and that's it i was able to you know touch the instrument and it's really how i imagine it the, the sound is really you know um very warm and not like when i first touched the guitar so when i touched the guitar first touched uh, a guitar i was like maybe 10 years old and of course when you have you know small soft fingers and when you touch the the guitar for the first time you you always feel that you know the the little pain when you touch the stick uh, to touch the strings right and, <laughs> and when i had it with the chapman stick it was you know very different because it, it the the action is very uh very low and even without i think i i i remember touching it not even plugged in so i could hear you know i could hear um the 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 reverberation of the strings right then and there and with it was really nice and then when i plugged it in and you know and i finally discovered yeah i think i can do this <laughs> <laughs> I can do this um yeah and then i started researching um well back then 
um, there, there wasn't many YouTube links around, but I had to go through uh, the stick forums once more and, you know, um, ask for uh, what uh, what uh, uh, learning materials I could use. And then finally, I was able to communicate with uh, Stick Enterprises back then. I was able to email um, because I had to replace the strings, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, it was still, you know, it was still, you know, okay. But I could, I can see some rust and going on it because I remember the owner told us it was actually he was able to to. Um, to buy it from somebody from Hawaii or something, and it right. was just displayed. It wasn't really played, um, so that was it. When when I was um, when I chanced upon uh, buying the strings, uh, for some reason Emmett Emmett himself replied, and he he was surprised that his instrument got to the Philippines. I didn't even know. I didn't think he 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 knew. Where, where the Philippines, Philippines was, was. yeah, <laughs> at that time. So you know, it was really a nice co uh, conversation back then. And um, well, the the one reason why why he also emailed me was because they needed to know uh, the serial number of of the instrument because they really register. They tried to register all the current owners of the stick so there so so that's how we we, we first got to know each other what and, a story you know, so it's, it's a little bit like the universe <laughs> made that happen for you it was like oh, it was, yeah. you were meant to be in a band and you convinced your band members to buy it for them which then <laughs> ended up turning up to be yours <laughs> yeah and you know what um the time that i got it you know i was really just playing it for myself you know I was training myself how, how do we do this and I didn't really plan to use it in the band in Fusebox and what happened was that time it was very like you said maybe the universe you know brought it brought it together and th that time we didn't have a bass player he quit maybe like a few months <laughs> there, back here you go it's another one <laughs> tick yeah, yeah yeah and then our guitarist said hey wait a minute the the, the stick has bass rings the <laughs> Yeah. So why don't you try, you know, just just getting the flow of the and I'm not a bassist. I, <laughs> I mean I can play the bass on the keyboard, but that's it. So uh, okay, and then all right, I'll try. So you know, the learning curve of the stick was pretty different for me in the sense that I um started playing it as a bass. So Probably like, you know, uh, I got some inspiration from, of course, from Tony Levin of how he played it with, with um, sure. Crimson. King Crimson and, you know, uh, Liquid Tension and, you know. So there, um, I discovered this tech as a bass instrument for a fuse box, but eventually, you know, uh, I had to use also the melody strings for whatnot. So I started experimenting on it. And, you know, I had a couple of lessons with Greg. I had a few books with me. Um, I think that's Greg and Steve Adelson's books mm -hmm. that uh, helped me also to to uh, learn about this amazing instrument. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's the story. It's, yeah, it's interesting because I always, I always thought with you being in the Philippines, and obviously I've been in the Philippines quite a bit, and you just and, – and coming from Australia, when I was – I remember in 1985, I was touring in a band, um, and a friend of mine was another band, Ice House, they were called, and he brought back a stick – from Germany is mm -hmm. Glenn Kraftcheck, and it was like that was my first sight of one. And then years ago, later, I was playing at the NAMM show for a guitar company, and I ended up buying one off Emmett. And I brought it back, and like you said, I, I was like, I was one of the guys that with the rust on the string, so I just sat there really, and I was like, I was so busy doing all my guitar stuff that. But then years yeah. later, you know, especially with COVID, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a go, and I <laughs> I picked it up, and then. The rest is history. I got right into it. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's amazing. And I remember talking to Emmett about some of those stories, and he was like he, – he was such an amazing man at the time because he would just have all these incredible stories that you could just elicit from him, you know, um, not oh, just yeah. via email, oh, yeah. you know. but um, Definitely. Um, and you know what I love about Emmett when he goes through – my emails and answers it it's really organized i don't know i don't know how he replies to you but you know he he um uh, he does he quotes every part of my email yeah. and then replies to it that's yeah. that's how he does it <laughs> i'm not gonna you know i'm not really gonna get lost with these emails you know i, I fondly <laughs> remember i fondly remember those and every time that i i give him 
um, links of some of my performances and I tell him uh, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he has he, he has a way with words of describing how your music is. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I think I, I will remember most. Um, he, he gives you that um, encouragement to, mm -hmm. you know, to continue what you do and even gives you know, random advices here and there, because, you know, even before he was an inventor, he was a musician, you know, sure. just like us. And so I can, just, yeah. can I just go into it? Like, um, there's a lot of people that watch the show, the people that play the stick, play the war guitar, play um, touch guitars, whatever. Um, and, you know, I, I'm always interested that in, especially, I'm interested that the people that seem to pick up these instruments are, are people that have got this really innate curiosity, um, that, that just want to keep exploring. And even when you sort of listen to King Crimson or you listen to the music, there's this sort of dimension of that's sort of trying to push the boundaries. And, you know, like I find it's really, uh, some people approach a stick from a bass, some people approach it from a guitar player perspective, some people just pick it up and approach it from things. But I find that, I don't know whether you agree with this, but I find that being in a little country town or in a little place that is away from that, it sort of nurtures that sort of experimentalism, I think, because it's sort of, especially in the days when there wasn't the books available and there wasn't the YouTubes, and there's still not a lot for I these agree. sort of instruments. I agree, yeah. You know what I mean? It sort of, it gives you a good sort of, um, it allows you to lock yourself in and to sort of develop, whereas the more resources you've got, the more blase you become about it a little bit. You That's know? right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with what you, it's, you know, it's really, the internet has the, you know, the ups and its downs. I mean, ups because the re resources are unlimited right now. Even if you just type stick, there you go. There's something about it. But um, having few resources back then, it lets you immerse, you know, immerse yourself even more with what the instrument can do and immerse yourself to discover what you can do. Um, I mean, it's just not um, seeing somebody play it and you trying to copy it because music is not like that. I believe mm. music should be... Um, really heard and try to interpret it the way you hear it yeah and then you know that's how i mean even van Halen, you know used to do that i mean he would just you know you would just listen to it and try to do it on your own so what i did back then was of course um as i was you know uh, preparing for a fuse box songs with the bass lines on it that's the same thing because I won't have any references of how it should be played on the stick, right? So I was trying to copy the notes or the lines maybe and try to incorporate it with my own um, finger positions and whatnot. And the books does, don't tell you about it. It just tells you, you know, the basics, how you should handle it. But being a very flexible, diverse instrument as a Chapman stick is, you have room to discover how you're supposed to play it you know mm. um even if there are methods uh, like bob culbertson's method is different from greg's it still you know ties up in a certain way that that you come out with still beautiful music and mm. that that's how amazing the the this method or the technique that that um Emmett discovered, you know, so yeah. uh, it was to to that, I guess. Um, it's it's you know immersing yourself with uh, what's available to you and trying to discover it for your own, you know. And then I if, think that's if what, what's stick, amazing you, about yeah. the stick or the war guitar, or is you can sit down and go right. I have no idea what I'm doing. I did a record in um, in Los Angeles in 2006 with. Uh, John from Limp Bizkit and, and uh, Nigel and some guys from around America and we had this band Stereo Chemics and I got this war guitar and I actually just wrote a part which was the whole intro of the song and I had no idea what I was doing but I listened <laughs> back but it's it's interesting not knowing what you're doing is sort of the mother of invention really in a way you know like True. and so it's it's and since then you know I started really taking it seriously a couple you know, nearly a year and just over a year and a half ago now and you know, I'm at a point now where I'm I'm playing stuff, I'm transcribing stuff, I'm writing things myself. But it's right. um, I find that that you know, having enough instructions good, but it's also good to also then go right. I've got enough, but I I'm, I want to go and explore on my own now. You know what I mean? And just right. and find my right. own way and see if I can find my own voice in this. You know what I mean? Do you yeah, agree with that of or? course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I totally agree. I mean. Um, I, I kind of have that uh, that 
um, the relationship now with the Chapman like, you know, I, I can, uh, I, I've developed a way of, you know, trying to make my own music out of it. Uh, I mean, aside, of course, from Fusebox, I also play around with it with, with my group Manila Sky, and this is an improv type of music, and we sort of, you know, um, got together because of the different instruments that we play. So in that band, the Chapman stick is there, a tabla player, you know, is there. We use a tabla with with my Indian friend, and then um, my, then my other friend, my other bandmate uses the hand pants. <laughs> So, so it's really nice, and and my key, uh, our keyboardist has this all sort of synth thingies, <laughs> so electronics uh, combined with acoustic and the handpans, and it's a very very nice combination. And it's nice to play with the Chapman stick with it because you can really experiment, you know, uh, and and finding your own sound, even with or without the effects. It's really nice, and it's just so. Mm -hmm. The sound is just so peaceful to, mm. to, you know, even just immerse yourself with that. And that's it. I, I mean, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of have I, I spent so many years learning and teaching music. And I, I, I've mentioned this before. I get really, got really bored with it. But when I picked up this instrument again, it was like rediscovering music in a way for me. Right. And I rediscovered my passion for music because I'd lost my passion. Yes. I've been doing it for so long. It was like. Yes. Oh yeah, I'll go in yeah. and produce something, or I'll knock something up, and I've got all these, all I these think, beautiful, yeah. you know what I mean. But it really inspired me again. So I was like, wow. I think it's the same. I think it's the same with me because, because my first instrument, my very first instrument was the piano, and I learned it way, way back when I, well, I was still small. My grandmother taught me how to play the piano, and then you know, um, later on I got into the church, and then uh, finally I, it took up music also as well. So you know, it's been there and. And having another instrument with all of this knowledge already poured into you makes it, um, you know, makes it even more satisfying in a way that you, you're right. You know, I rediscovered the passion for it and making, you know, making more music out of it. And even just to, uh, what do you call it, rearrange stuff that you know and trying oh. to, you know, transcribe it in the Chapman stick. That's what I well, that's what I actually did in the in the lockdown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was making my videos. I you know, I was trying to okay, what what song would be very nice in the Chapman stick? You know, and, and I'm doing that exactly that alone, now. Yeah. I, yeah, I, and that yeah. alone gives you that, you know, the the juice to think about what what can I do? Can I do this in the Chapman stick? Will this be nice? Will, how how will the voicings work? You no, know, you know stuff like that, and and it's nice that we are able to bring it out there in the world and the social media. I mean, I cannot imagine, you know, that that Steve or Greg would be able to see me and you know comment, you know, um, give their thoughts also on how I played it, and it and it's just an inspiration. It's hard here in the Philippines if you're the only one playing the Chapman I can stick. I can't even imagine. Like, I thought <laughs> I was I'm... isolated, but you're really isolated, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I don't know who's the nearest here. If, if there's somebody from Indonesia, I think. Who, who, do you there, walk there into music people... stores and people go, what the, like, do people's minds, like, melt? Oh, when yeah. You... Yeah. A, a, a lot of them they go like that. I mean, sometimes um, the first uh, the first question sometimes in their mind is, "What kind of strings do you buy for those?" <laughs> because when you're in the music store, you know what like, I say when they say that. I go very expensive <laughs> ones. <laughs> yeah, but I have a takeaway. I I tell them. Yes, it's ex it's expensive, but since you tap it, you don't you know you don't really like try to replace it every every now and then. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so sometimes I try to buy mine in in two batches or so, but still, you know, <laughs> it's still. And the chipping is a killer, here. isn't it? It's I just know, crazy. I know, I know. I can even imagine. <laughs> so there. So it's really a, a very uh, nice experience to have. Um, 
it's you know it's sort of uh, ups and downs also pros and cons when you're the only one and and you know every everybody's eyes are on you but at the same time you get that feeling now oh i wish i could be there in the stick event that you have in there in in la or something and um i i i actually got invited i remember a couple of years back maybe it was 2015 or 2016 guillermo from um spain uh, invited me for one of the stick forums that was held there, but it didn't really push through. And I was really, really, really sad that I didn't, didn't get to go there. But, you know, how I wish. I... It will happen again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The timing wasn't I... right. The timing will be right. So Yes, I know, I know. So that's what I told myself, you know, it, it, the, the timing wasn't for Well, Guillermo, yet, if you're and, watching you know. this, if you're watching this, you know who you need to invite, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're on notice, Guillermo. <laughs> Guillermo, yeah, he, he really, you know, uh, helped me a lot uh, during that <laughs> that that uh, thing. And then actually, this, the Emmett also helped me uh, to get to push through with that thing, but it really didn't happen. So, well, Abby, it's, uh, so, it will it's, happen. it's just great to chat to you. I'm like, I'm really thrilled that you're, you know, you're championing it over there and you're pushing through and you've got a great personality and I love what you're doing and your videos. Thank and it's you. just, it's just Thank awesome you. to have you on the show. And, um, you know, I look forward to one day when all this craziness finally finishes, catch up with all these great players that I'm talking with. I know, with across I the hope world. so. Yeah. yeah <laughs> thank amazing. you. Thank you, Finn, for having me. Oh, my God. Uh, I, it's really nice to have somebody to talk to that, you know, that um, it's really uh, far out to imagine that, you know, uh, we have the same sentiments of how, how you can be really passionate with your music. Um, and I think that that's one of the magic of of the chap and stick it um because i i noticed that most of uh the stick players are are these are their like second or third instrument you know it's it's and i i imagine the day that it will become the first instrument that a child or a you know a kid would would have right and it, mm. it's just so many so many things to learn about the stick and i'm still learning right now even you know if, if, when i'm performing i still discover a lot of things that you know i can i can do with it so it's really well, i think nice. inspiration's a really powerful powerful thing that the world's sort of lost touch with a little bit you know it's all everyone's be wants to get to the end and the destination and be perfect and but the, right. the journey and the exploring is so, so gratifying and so thrilling. Oh, yes. Music yes. just gives you that, you know. So anyway, it's fantastic uh, to talk yeah. to you. Thanks, Abby. Thank you so much, Finn, and for having me. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll catch up again one day, hopefully in real life soon. Yes, okay. definitely. Thanks okay. so much, Abby. Bye. Bye. Cool. That was great. Thank you, Abby. Yay! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. That was that okay. was great. I'll um I'll cut that up and then if you've got a little bio, because what I'll do is I do a little intro to you on the show. Like I'll yep. I'll you know I'll go blah 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 and I'll talk about you and then um and then if whatever videos you want, I'll just cut in so I've got some B roll to make it just just to make the episode yeah. punch and be. I'll anything. send yeah I'll send some of uh, the links that that I have. Um, would you would YouTube links be okay? Yeah, YouTube's with perfect. You? That's fine. Yeah, perfect. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'll send those to you, and I'll send the recent my recent uh, bio, so you can yeah, that's, cut yeah, great. Some parts there and I'll, uh, here and there. And I'll uh, I'll come up with some crazy title, and it'll all look Yay. good. And if, you, if you've got a uh, if you I don't know if you've got a shot a shot. Normally, I'll do like sure. a title for yeah, YouTube. Sure. You know, blah blah blah. If you got whatever you've got, send me whatever you got, and I'll just I'll 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 cut it together and make it all look pretty pretty awesome. And it should, 
it sh- there. There you go. Yeah, and it should. Um, you know, the the episodes are doing pretty well. They're getting five about five thousand a month views. At the first month, they get about five thousand. It gets to about eight thousand. So it's they're trending up. But yeah, there's quite a lot of people tuning in. So it's good. Okay, when are you planning to release uh, your second your next season? Well, I just released the code last year, um, um, but I'm working on a a new project where I'm. I've got a technology I invent. See, I invent things too. I've got businesses, so I've got a, a new technology with Ahmet Zappa, who's Frank Zappa's son. So we've got this uh, technology wow. that uses sound frequencies to change human emotion. So I'm I'm doing some things on. The, so it's all this psychoacoustic science I've been doing. So we we're tr- doing trials with it, Los Angeles Police Department, U.S. military, and some sports people. So I'm doing that, and then I've built a new Lego business out of London, and so I'm doing all these weird things. Um, so. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've you know I've I've done that all my life. I built companies, and then I've got a company here on the stock exchange here in Australia, a video company. So I, I um I'm constantly just working stuff out, I exploring my mind, you know, whether it's code and software or music or. So I, I did my last album last year, and that that took quite a number of years because what I did was I I encoded things. So I I wrote the words to a song, then I encoded that to Morse code, and the rhythm guitar played the Morse code and. And then I did things where I, I got DNA blueprints of animals and then I sort of mapped that out to a sequence. So I did all these weird things. So I was The concept was I was trying to encode information in the music. So uh-huh. my next one that I'm working on is, is around um, planetary orbital data. Um, so I've got this NASA data and I'm trying to work around Dolby Atmos mixes of how I create psychoacoustic cues that are moving through space. So I'm, I'm constantly oh, yeah. working on weird stuff. Um, I don't know when that'll come out, but. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to you right now about this. <laughs> You're like Brian May or something. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's just, you know, I'm always, I'm always, um, I'm always exploring, you know, like this is what yeah. I do. And, but I, I've learned over time that because, because I'm so weird, I've learned that, you know, I, I, the best thing for me to do is to patent these ideas, raise some capital, oh, put yeah. a company together and get, eventually get people to run it. So that's what right. I'm trying to do now. And, you know, that gives me the time to do this and to do whatever I want, really. So, about to to ask you about how you're doing all of the things, but wow, I, I'm I'm glad that we've connected uh, with each other. And you know, um, my, my my music partner Eric, he's also the keyboardist I was telling you about who bought the Chapman stick. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has really also crazy ideas like, but not like yours. But <laughs> but it's so nice to you to to you know connect with people who have these great minds and um, hopefully you know I, I get a chance to meet up with you. you know, when when was the last time you were here in the Philippines? By the way. Uh, oh gee, it would have been uh, so. It was. So you said eighty five. Oh no 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 no! I was there way oh, okay. like, oh, right, right, uh, right, probably right. around. I was living in the US for eight years um, and I traveled uh-huh. all the way. I, I'd always travel to Singapore and I'd go over to the Philippines okay. when I'd, because okay. I had investors in the Philippines and I had investors in Singapore. So I all would right. travel over to um, to the Philippines. But I haven't been there since I reckon 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. We were actually constantly gigging back then. Do you know? I, Are we? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, oh, but well. I hope you, you if know, I do jet into town once all this, you know, I um, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, definitely hook you. I'll definitely send you an email. Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you so right, much, Abby. Finn. Thank you so all much. All right, nice. Have a great day. You. Yeah, okay, you too. Have a great day as well. Take care. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. in an empty room 
the love starts falling down. Better change your tune. You reach for the golden ring. Reach for the sky, baby. Just spread your wings. Get higher and higher, straight up. Baby.